where God took me up and out and taught me how to live in his kingdom, which is far greater, which is far more successful. And it is so much more fun, quite frankly. So this topic is going to be from the Mirror Bible, John 4, 14. And I have this artesian well because it gives a good picture of basically the blue is what we're going to talk about. And this is for you and for me. And you'll see. So if you don't have the Mirror Bible, just listen. It's John 4, 14, and it's on page 45 in the blue, the blue edition. It says, whoever drinks from the source of this water that I shall give will never thirst again because the water that I give becomes an artesian well bursting from within, defining the life of the ages. So just right there with that saying, whoever, this was uh, the story of the Samaritan woman. And at that time in the Bible, um, Jews and Samaritans did not associate and it was actually uh, forbidden but Jesus was full of love and Jesus was the master and so he said he knew she had five husbands in the past and he knew that she was uh, craving and needing his the source but he didn't care what other people thought and so he started speaking with her and he always taught Jesus always taught in parables so he was talking at this point about whoever drinks from the source so they met at the well and he asked her for some water from the well, and she was reaching in. But he was saying, whoever drinks from the source of this water that I shall give, that Jesus shall give, will never thirst again. And the reason why is because the life of Jesus Christ and the love of God is alive. It's alive in our hearts. It's alive forever and eternity. That's what God created for us. So what this means, if you will... This was from clip art on the internet, so I want to give them credit because I just pr printed it off and colored it. If you will, this is your heart. Obviously, this is rocks. This is underground. This is a little church. It's a little farm, mountains. But for the natural, the artesian well is the source of water that God created from the beginning that's way down low. And you have brick, stone, mortar, stone, stone. Forgive me for not giving you the right terms. You can go online and look up artesian well. I'm not... Um, an agricultural guru, but this is just in simple terms. So down below all the hard sediment and rock and mortar, you have this water that God created. So when there's an artesian well in the natural, it actually shoots forth and it brings forth water to the top and it's overflowing and you can't be stopped, I don't believe, unless you, I haven't researched it, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe that you can stop it unless you do something to stop it. But the point is, it's always overflowing from down within the substance. What this scripture is saying and what I'm trying to portray today and what has happened in my life, when you get so full of the word of God and make the word of God your final authority and make Jesus your Lord and make whatever he says in this word what you do. If he says, no, oh, no man, anything but love, then you do your best to get that way. It's not condemnation. It is saying how victory flows. The artesian well of God's spirit flows freely and abundantly when you follow the word of God. When you do what the word says. God is not trying to be nasty. He's trying to show you how he can come in and give you all of his glory and all of his righteousness. It's already there for us. And when you accept Jesus, you already get it. It's already a gift. But in order for it to flow out like this in abundance, you have to decide to make the word final authority oh god is not such a dictator that he's cracking the whip and mad at you if you don't follow the rules that's not it at all god loves you so much and he's given a blueprint to for us that we follow and as we follow it out of obedience and love everything of god goodness blessing health divine health divine prosperity wealth victory good things love people relationships everything flows out and you can't stop it it's an artesian well it flows out like that so what i'm trying to say whatever the word of god says we are to obey if he says fornication or sexual impurity is not of him because he has a better plan then we need to get into the word and let it change us not have condemnation not say oh i can't do that anymore you need to say lord if that is you, or if you are in debt, or if you're a borrowing, or if you're in fornication, or if, it doesn't even matter. If you're saying cuss words, don't cut yourself down. Just say, Lord, your word says the communication out of my mouth should be blessing. It should be love. It should be goodness. Okay, so if I'm not doing that, 
show me, Lord, how I'm missing it. Because even Paul talks about, I think it's 1 Corinthians 7, where his flesh, he just couldn't control it. But God says, stop trying to control it. Let the spirit control it. Fill so much up with the spirit of God that you walk and live in the spirit. And that's what does. That's what happens. That's how God changed me from 250 pounds to thin. Because he said, stop focusing on, stop eating. Focus on loving yourself and loving God in you. And focus on more of the word put in. And I'll change your desires. And he did. So let's finish up on John 4, 14. This has to be quick today. So whoever drinks, we're going to read it again. Whoever drinks from the source of this water that I shall give will never thirst again because the water that I give becomes an artesian well, bursting from within, um, defining the life of the ages. Jesus speaks of a spring of water, an artesian well, and that's why I give you this little description. To drink from me, Jesus is saying, is to be persuaded that I am, Jesus says, that I am what the scriptures are all about. Then you will discover, this is the most important part of the day. The scriptures tell us what Jesus is about. But then, when you're in the scripture, you discover what you're all about. And you are what I am all about, Jesus says. And rivers of living water will gush out of your innermost being. For anybody who knows me, they know. It is not me. They know the love of Jesus comes out of me like I can't stop it. I can't stop giving. I can't stop blessing. And it has nothing to do with Lisa. Just know, it is not, I'm not promoting Lisa. I am promoting God within me. And I sit back and do less and less of me, more and more of his word. And he, and I allow him to come out and he overtakes everything. And it always flows. I don't have to think about it or use my natural brain. Because it says here, the natural brain isn't even the same as the spirit. Let's go down the very second to last sentence on John 4, 14 in um, Francois' notes. It is discovering the fountain within your innermost being. The unveiling of Christ in you exceeds your every expectation. I'm telling you, I'm begging you, make time to spend time in the word of God. This cannot flow freely and 24-7 if we, the only thing that blocks it, it's not God. He has poured out blessings. If you're a tither, the, the windows of heaven are open for you and he's rebuked the devourer. That is in Malachi 3, 10 and 11. But if you're having blockages and you're a tither, then there's something that you're not doing that the word of God says. So all you have to do is ask the Holy Spirit to let you know and repent. Go to um, 1 John 1, 9, 1 John 2, 0, and it tells you, I will check those if that's not right. It tells you how to repent. God's already forgiven us. He already knew that we would make mistakes because Satan is on this earth and he's trying to prevent us from getting the truth. But this is the truth. And the truth is you don't care about the mistakes. You just repent and move on. And then you live in the righteousness of God. Before I close, I want to tell you, um, oh, where's the chalk? Okay, well, I'll have to write it here. Um, my pastor, Bill Winston, he has a really good YouTube video and it's called, um, my dad reminded me, Power of Prayer... I'm going to put it up here. And praise. It's only 20 minutes. Volume 1. And I'll put it right here. Oh, that's really good. You can't even see it. Oh, you can now. Power of Prayer and Praise. Volume 1 by Bill Winston. And I didn't have my chalk, so I apologize. I should have wrote it. But it talks about who you are and your righteousness. And, and that word righteousness, most people don't understand. But he breaks it down. And it's how we should be approaching God. With Jesus in your heart, you are not supposed to be going to God Oh, poor old me. Oh, Lord, I'm unworthy. I'm not worthy. No. If I had a kid or all my nephews and my niece, they know that when they're with Aunt Lisa, we rule and reign. We buy what we want in, in proportion, whatever the Lord says. We don't have lack. We don't have fear. We take care of circumstances. We rule and reign traffic. It's the same thing with what you're supposed to be doing if you have Jesus in your heart. But if you don't understand who you are, then you don't know how to rule and reign as a child of the king. And that's what you need to learn. And because he is the minister of the gospel and my pastor, he explains it so much better. I just like to do real terms and what's easy. So I'm trying to tell you, if you want the artesian well, the blessings of God to flow in your life all the time, then you need to stay in the word of God and ask for forgiveness for whatever the blockages are. So I apologize for being so fast. I just, the Lord told me to do that today and that's it. I love you all. Thank you for all the beautiful hearts and get in the word of God and go to my website. If you need help with anything, you can email me 
Um, life is so good, but it's only good when everybody else is learning, when everybody else is growing, and when everyone else is having success stories. It doesn't do good with just one person, but when we're all having success stories and we're all growing in the Word of God, it is so much fun. I love you. I love you. All your sweet comments. I apologize if I missed any. I look silly when I go like that, so I try not to read unless someone needs me, and I'll, the Lord will tell me. All right. Love you so much. Have a great day. Bye.